Hi, and welcome to Practice Insights, the channel dedicated to supporting independent management consultants with tools and techniques to help win gigs and deliver client engagements. Our aim is to become a hub of valued resources for freelancers, interims and contractors by providing information on every aspect of consulting life, from setting up, finding work, delivering your assignments and preparing for retirement. So make sure to check us out. Now, this video is episode two of our Consulting Essentials series, which provides short overviews of the most commonly used consulting tools. The series really is aimed at people who are perhaps newer to consulting, but it's also a quick way for you to refresh your memory if you are more experienced. And the subject of today's video is the RACI matrix. So let's break it down together. Now, a common issue you will encounter while consulting is confusion about project roles and responsibilities. Often this confusion is not immediately visible, usually only when things start to go very wrong that the lack of clarity becomes evident and problematic. So enter the RACI matrix, a simple tool used to define and document roles and responsibilities within a project or any other form of consulting engagement. So what is a RACI matrix and how should you use it? So it's pervasively used by project managers. A RACI can help clarify ownership of all the tasks, products, outputs, milestones and decisions that takes place throughout a project's life cycle. And knowing exactly who is responsible for what will significantly improve your chances of successfully delivering your engagement. In practice, a RACI is usually a simple spreadsheet that lists all the stakeholders of a project and their level of involvement with each task, denoted with the letters OR, A, C and I. RACI. It stands for Responsible, Accountable, Consultant and Informed. So let's look at each assignment in a little bit more detail. So starting with responsible, this is the person who does the work, who completes the task, who creates a deliverable. Every task should have at least one responsible person. These are your doers. Accountable, this is the person who is the owner of the work. They usually sign off when the task, objective or decision is complete. Usually there's only one person accountable, which means that the buck stops with this individual. Consultant, these people provide input and feedback on the work being done. They usually have a stake in the outcome of the specific activity or the whole project. I'd advise you to consult these stakeholders areas, you will often find they are subject matter experts or gatekeepers. Informed. Well, these people just need to be kept in the loop of progress, but do not need to be consulted with the detail of every task. They need to know what's going on because it could affect their work. And they're not decision makers, generally speaking. Now, the process for creating a race is relatively simple. First step is to identify all the activities that you're seeking to include within the scope of the RACI itself. And this scope can be as narrow or as broad as you need it to be. So it could be at the highest commercial level, like a RACI for EMEA, sales and revenue, or really detailed, like subsections of the business case. Next, we identify all the people, products, subtasks related to that activity. After this, we assign the RACI elements to each task. Then, in step four, we seek to validate that all sections of the RACI are completed and ensure that every task is at least one stakeholder responsible for it. Remember, no task should have more than one stakeholder accountable. Lastly, we need to share, discuss, and assess the completed RACI with stakeholders to resolve any conflicts or ambiguities. Now, let's take a look at a RACI example together. So here you can see two simple RACI tables prepared to highlight the wide range of applications of the RACI tool. So, as you can see, the focus of RACI 1 is product-oriented and prepared by a project manager to make sure the team is clear about who produces the necessary outputs. Products have been listed in the product column and RACI assigned to each team member. Now, in RACI 2, this is set within the context of a commercial partnership where an IT provider is taking on a new client and novating staff and contracts from the incumbent supplier. In this RACI, the focus is on big strategic outcomes, so it is less detailed than the previous RACI 1. Here, the commercial director and account director have shared accountability for signing the deal, achieving innovations, and readying the partnership for new business and new projects. Each other director is assigned responsibilities for areas within their specific domain, so HR, IT, or legal. A strategic RACI like this will be used for board level communication and will almost certainly have more detailed RACIs sitting behind it, normally in the detailed implementation plan. The important takeaway for you here is that you can apply the RACI technique in many different circumstances to help achieve many different goals. Now there are some really good reasons to use uh, the RACI tool. First off, you're much more likely to get better engagement with your teams and your stakeholders as putting names to outputs and tasks will invariably focus people's minds. A RACI matrix will also help to reduce confusion about product and task ownership. A RACI is usually quite scalable and can be used in a variety of settings and a variety of circumstances. It can be as light as a detailed or as you need it to be. So once you've assigned team members to each part of the RACI matrix, training new hires and extending your processes becomes a little easier. 
That basically can also help with conflict resolution as it should reduce friction between team members and stakeholders as everyone will be clear about the scope of their responsibilities and who to talk to if they have questions. Also using a racy matrix can sometimes increase your administrative efficiency as it makes it easier to set up meetings and have clear agendas that are attended by the relevant stakeholders. But remember that simply preparing the racy matrix is not enough. You must assess and validate it to make sure it will work and you should get buy-in to the assignments of racy elements with the people who are being assigned those responsibilities. Assigning people roles and tasks and responsibilities without letting them know will usually not very end very well for you. So the key here is to look across the matrix and resolve conflicts and any other issues. Look out for the following when signing your own racy elements. So too many ORs might mean too many people involved in the doing of a particular task. No A's, no ORs mean that no one is responsible and the work won't get done. Lots of I's and C's probably means there are too many people involved. Too many A's means the work is not being assigned at the right level. People who have too many ORs, watch well, out for this, are probably being overworked. And finally, products and tasks should really be focused and meaningful. Don't fill a racy with kind of obvious things like attend meeting or respond to emails. Thanks for stopping by. If you found the summary of the racy assessment useful, then please hit the like button and consider subscribing as we will be developing detailed step-by-step how-to video guides for each tool in the Consulting Essentials series. We'll also be running live sessions that you can attend where we'll workshop the consulting tools and approaches together in real time. Hope to see you in the next video and until then, happy consulting.